is going to be a lesson to better help you understand why we outline the way we do in public speaking. It is a balmy 80 degrees here in February in Florida as I'm recording this, so you may hear the birds in the background or the wind chimes. Now, one of the things I hear from students frequently is they never really learned how to outline. And in our class, research-based outlines are required for all of your speeches. And the reason is because this helps you write the kind of speech that is going to help you deliver a good speech. A lot of times you might not realize how important the outline is and you might rush through it, spend an hour or so working on it, and then be really stressed out because you're preparing a speech that is not well written. And that creates a big challenge. It's much easier to spend quite a bit of time writing your speech, which is what the outline, the preparation outline is. And when you have a good speech to rehearse from, it's likely you'll find that rehearsing and presenting are a lot easier. So in this lesson, we are gonna start from scratch and I am going to teach you about formatting, but also the reasons behind why we do what we do in these outlines. So the first thing that I would suggest to you is I really like to use Google Docs for my outline. And you can use a Google account to use this service for free. One of the benefits is every document you create will be saved forever, which is handy for you if you ever wanted to use whatever you created again in the future for school or work. But also because it means once you create a good outline, you can make a copy of it and then you'll have a template that you can use to create future outlines that meet requirements for the course. Now, one other note, I have included for you a new lesson um, which goes along with this. And it has infographics on the different steps in writing your outline, but also at the end it has links to all of the course resources that you've already reviewed and read and watched video lessons that relate to outlining and they're all here in one place and my hope is that will help you better relocate the information when you need it. So let's get down to outlining. The first thing that you want to do on any outline is you want to create places for your topic, general purpose, specific purpose, and central idea statements. Central idea could also be known as your thesis and also to indicate the type of organizational style you're using. So your topic is the topic that you are writing your speech on. So we'll do this for the demonstration speech. Demonstrate a process or a task using steps. General purpose for this speech is to inform your general purpose for all of your speeches in this class will be to inform, except for the persuasive speech, which will be to persuade, or um, perhaps for the special occasion speech, which you might use a different topic, like uh, to, or a different uh, general purpose, such as to inspire or to commemorate. But for our purposes now, to inform is what you'll be using for your demonstration speech, it's what you use for your introduction speech, it's what you'll use for your informative speech. And notice that the general purpose is just two words, to inform. The specific purpose begins to inform my audience, and then you're going to give us a preview of what you are informing your audience on. Ideally, this is going to reference your main points. To, so to inform my audience how to, and then whatever the task is or process that you're demonstrating. And then you want to reference the steps. And in this case, those are the main points. To inform my audience how to, whatever, in using these steps, or you might want to use different language. But we should see here short references to main point one and I'm putting them here in brackets you do not put brackets in yours but this is just to show you this would represent keywords for main points one two 
3, etc. Now, the central idea is a little different because that goes beyond your purpose for the speech, and it really should capture the elements of your speech thematically, right? And the bigger way that you're relating this to the audience. Your central idea for our requirements will be one complete sentence. And you want to spend quite a bit of time on that as you revise and perfect your outline to make sure that you have a good central idea statement. This is something you are going to use throughout your outline. Finally, organizational style for the demonstration speech. That style is chronological, but this could be topical, it could be spatial, and you can read all about those in your text. A final thing, I'm just going to formatting-wise bold the labels here, and that is to help me better organize the information and see where this appears. Now remember, since you submit all of your work in our course digitally, you do not need to include a lot of extra spaces or anything here. The next thing that you're going to do is you are going to create a title and center it on the page. If you want to bold it, that's fine. The title should be creative and it should represent um, the big picture, the big idea for your speech. What I like to suggest is pretending you were presenting this speech at a conference um, or in a work setting and the title would be published in the program or in the meeting notes. And you want to create a title that makes people want to listen to your speech. So try to go beyond just functional or keywords and write a title that's very meaningful. Next up, we're going to be left justify, and so we are lined up. And I'm going to start here um, by using the numbered list function to select this option, which uses Roman numerals, and you can see capital letters, ordinal numbers, and then lowercase letters in this style. It's really helpful if you go ahead and do this from the beginning when you're outlining because then you know that you have the correct format. And I'm going to fill in what I would expect to see in an outline for these points. You can have anywhere from two to five main points in your speech outline. Uh, I recommend that you have at least three. Um, but you could have two, you could have four, you could have five. And if you had four, you would have them like so. Right. Um, I'm then going to go up to the introduction. Now, in your text um, and in the examples, you can see that you are allowed to use a paragraph for the introduction. I discourage this um, for a few reasons. One is that you want to make sure you meet all five required elements for the introduction. And one way to make sure you do that is to have specific labeled points that will serve as reminders for you of the information that you need to cover. Now, before we dive into that, I want to get you to notice how all of these points that have Roman numerals are all lined up and left justified in the same place, right? So they all line up visually in the same point on the page here, correct? So when I add the next point, and I'm just hitting the return key, and now I'm hitting the tab key, this is going to be a sub point of the introduction. And this will always be the same thing in a speech outline. It will be an attention getter, okay? Next. The, there are several steps that follow this one, and they can be presented in any order that you wish, um, in any order that makes sense to you when you're writing your outline. But this is what they are. You need to introduce your topic, purpose, and central idea. You want to establish your credibility on this topic. Why you? Why should the audience listen to you? What is your expertise? That could be as simple as you've researched this topic a lot. 
for your demonstration speech. Hopefully you're demonstrating something that you have expertise at and you can share that expertise or even what inspired you to write this speech. The next item is relate your topic to your audience. Remember in our course we are always writing speeches not for yourself, not for me, your instructor, but for your audience. And it's really important that you take time, especially here in the introduction, to let your audience know why this information is important to them and why it matters. The last element in your introduction is you are going to preview your main points. And this is very similar to what you did in your specific purpose statement. Now before I move on, I want to remind you these three items that are shown here, B through D, could be presented in any order. You could first relate your topic to your audience. You could establish your credibility first. They do not need to come in the order that I've typed them here. However, the attention getter should always come first and preview your main points should always come last. Notice how all of these points are all aligned and use the same capital letters. This is because all of these points are subpoints that are support, so supporting the introduction point. Okay. For each of these points, you are going to write one complete sentence. And for all points in this outline, you are going to write one complete sentence and just one complete sentence, not two sentences, not sentence fragments, not questions, one complete sentence. And you can always do a quick Google search if you need a refresher on writing complete sentences. Specifically preview your main points, you want to write something like, and I'm going to unfold this, today I will speak to you about main point one. main point two, and main point three. And again, just like in the specific purpose statement, remember you don't need to use brackets. You'll actually be using keywords that you use to reference each of your main points. This is providing your audience with a roadmap so they know what's coming in the speech. One of your goals as a speaker is after you present your main points and after you present your speech, that your audience would be able to list the main points and remember them because you have provided this roadmap, you've put emphasis in transitioning to them, and they should be really clear and make sense logically in why you chose those main points. Before we move on to those main points, let's talk about what would you do if you wanted to use an attention getter such as a story and it used more than one complete sentence. So this gets into how to add the next level of subpoints. And I'm gonna, as you saw, put my cursor at the end of a line, hit return, hit tab, and now I have one for a subpoint. So I'm just going to put placeholders in here so you can see how this works. Now an important note here, if you have one point at any level, such as one, oops, such as one. You can't have just one point at that level. And that's because these are subparts of a whole, right? In this case, they are subpoints that support the beginning attention getter. They also need to be complete sentences. So you could have as many of these as you needed to have. But generally, if you move beyond four or five subpoints at any level, you might want to consider if you should take it and break it down to the next subpoint level. So when we use that, we get A, and this would be a complete sentence. And we are going to hit return again and add another one in. So notice we have an A, so therefore we need to have a B because you can't just have one. So that is how you would arrange this. Um, same thing if you had multiple sentences that you wanted to establish on your credibility, you would go in here and do the same process. 
Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about this in main points, but the reason that you do this one sentence and one complete sentence per point, one, you're writing a preparation outline. So the idea is that I could give this outline to someone else, and they could basically deliver your entire speech for you. Nothing is keywords, nothing is shorthand. They are complete sentences written as you plan to speak them when you're orally delivering. The other reason that this is important is because when you rehearse, let's say you rehearse and your speech limit is four to six minutes and your first rehearsal comes out being eight minutes. One of the ways that you can reduce the time logically is to go in and remove sub sub points that perhaps you don't need to introduce that information to the audience. So I'm going to take these out just for our formatting purposes and it will vary greatly from student to student where you use these subpoints and how you use them. But notice once we've added these subpoints for the introduction, we still have all of the introduction, main points and conclusion lined up here and all of these are still linked, lined up at the same level. So let's look at how that would look for a main point. I'm going to do this for one of the main points to show you. So each main point should be one complete sentence. Shouldn't be a question, shouldn't be keywords, shouldn't be two sentences. It should be one complete sentence. And when you're writing your main points, you really want to strive for parallel structure. That means you're writing the main points similarly in the way that you construct the sentences but also um, they represent significant points that have the same significance level in your central idea, right? So um, that will, of course, vary depending on what your topic is and what you're demonstrating. I like to suggest that you keep the labels here because writing an outline is very much a process. It's not a one and done. You're going to be revising this throughout your rehearsals. And so it's good to keep those labels there so when you're going back and changing things, you don't get confused. I'm going to take out main points four and five to simplify this. And now we have a kind of roughed out version of how these main points would look. I'm going to put my cursor at the end of the sentence and hit return and then tab to move to that A level. So this is going to be supporting evidence. This could be statistics, facts, testimony, anecdotes. You can read all about those in your text. This is the information that you use to support your main points, to illustrate what you're telling us in your main points. And one of the main items that are required and that I'll be looking for in supporting evidence is that you use supporting evidence from credible sources to support your main points, which should be your original ideas. So again, these are main points. They are original ideas. They should never contain supporting evidence or references to credible sources of supporting evidence because your main points are your original ideas your arguments if you think of it a different way in constructing an essay or a thesis. Same style as in the introduction. If you have an A at any level, you have to have a B at that level. Um, you can have a C, you can have a D, and you don't need to label these supporting evidence. As a matter of fact, I would discourage that. 